All right, hello everyone, Doug Gaffney here, President of ERS Home Services. I just wanted to take a few minutes to share with you guys and provide you guys somewhat of an introductory to ERS Home Services. Uh, here in the corporate office, my office particularly, and you know, uh, I'd like to of course say welcome, you know, for some of you guys that are getting involved with solar for the very first time, or uh, you know, you have some experience, you guys know that, you know, the number one constant in life is change. The number one constant in life is change. And so, you know, within the context of, you know, solar particularly, you guys may or may not know that, you know, the, 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 the solar in different economies, different states, different, you know, utility districts, territories, are forever changing, constantly changing. I mean, there's a lot of different variables. Solar is very simple, yet can be very complex. But there's a lot of things that change on a regular basis. You know, the panel type or material or, you know, the, the, the technology or, you know, how it's being installed on the roof five years ago in comparison to today. Um, the process, essentially, you know, what's going on with the uh, permitting and building department with the counties, right? How fast they are pr uh, uh, approving permits. You know, there's an entire process and I want you guys to understand something, you know, this is construction. This isn't just, you know, signing, you know, for some of us coming from the uh, uh, financial services arena, you know, you guys know me, I'm, I'm also licensed within real estate and also in insurance and, you know, have advanced experience within the mortgage area as well. But this isn't just signing a piece of uh, paper, you know, for a client to get a, a, a huge thing done for them, of course. You know, this is also, in addition to all the contractual agreements and all the document and the education there, this is also construction. Meaning we're going to be installing, you know, a company, our, our general contractor is going to be installing a system on your home, an attached fixture on your property, okay, that has the potential to increase that property value depending on how it's attached, okay? And so there's a lot of different legal contractual content that can manipulate those variables, but at the end of the day, this is very simple and I want to walk you guys through this process. One of the things that has really made it challenging for a lot of folks and, and, and for us in the industry is a lot of the deceptive marketing and advertisement that goes on within this industry. You know, one of the things we're aware of is 2016, at the end of 2016, you know, it has been stated over and over again and it's really official that the federal tax credit will go away. It will expire, it will be reduced. We don't know for sure what you know, the entire change in its entirety will be, but we know that people are racing to purchase solar and claim it. Think about this for a second. When you file your income, when you file your taxes, federal, state, you know, generally you do that, you do that at the beginning of the year, between January to, you know, April 15th, right? You have that window of time. Well, guess what? Depending on when you get your solar system installed, you know, if you get it installed or not installed, but I'm sorry, contractually written up and depending on, of course, your CPA and, you know, uh, their comfortability. But when you get that contractual agreement, you know, and it says you purchase a system, it doesn't have to be installed yet, but it says you purchase a system in 2015. You can claim that, you know, and in some cases you can even claim the interest of the loan, okay? the finance amount annually, you can claim the interest on your taxes and you can get that tax credit, okay? You can get that tax credit and the other tax benefits um, if you get that started here in 2015. So there's a lot of folks that are racing right now to get that contractually done by the end of the year so that way they can get that return, that, that, that credit in the beginning of 2016 and not have to wait until 2017. Okay, does that make sense? So when we understand this, this is gonna be the same thing for when we're going to 2016 to 2017 and vice versa, there's different market uh, change, perceptional change within the client's mentality to wanna to move faster with a sense of urgency because that window of 2015 is going away. So leverage that as a professional. Provide that sense of urgency with your client, convey that because it's real. It's a real sense of urgency, but I want to make sure you're educated on that. Okay. Also, all of 2016, you know, knowing that the 30% tax credit is slated to go away, okay, or perhaps maybe be reduced. We don't know. 
But just think worst case scenario, it goes away. That means so many people are gonna to wanna to be getting solar in the year 2016. That means your business has an economic opportunity and huge potential to thrive, okay? We also, you know, we talk about what's going on, not just in different, you know, within the uh, tax, but also different markets within utilities, you know? Southern Cali, you know, you have the different utility districts, you have PG&E, you know, you have SMUD or SDG or LADWP, you know, you have uh, uh, Santa Clara or Silicon Valley Power, you know, you have different utility districts, MID, Modesto, Inter Irrigation, you could actually go on our website and there's a link and it'll show you all of California particularly and all the different utility districts. And of course, you know, in a lot of the utility districts, their rates, their charges, their pricing is different. The way they build a client is different. Also in certain areas, the, the utilities, because they haven't reached you know, their, their, their annual percentage as far as uh, renewable energy and achieving a certain level, they may be still offering different incentives or at the beginning of the year, they may throw out new incentives to incentivize clients to go solar. To give you an example, you know, in SMUD, when a client, a residential client goes solar, they get a $500 uh, rebate in addition to the tax credit and everything else. Okay, that's that's one for SMUD. You know, give you another example of some of the change. You know, LADWP, they stopped allowing, in the last couple of months, they stopped allowing PPAs. Okay, so now no PPA or no lease is an option. A person in that utility district has to own the solar. They cannot use a PPA or a lease as a form of financing. You know, to give you another example, some of the financing that we use, like PACE financing, which stands for uh, a property assessed clean energy. Okay, you can go to our website. We have some videos that explain these programs. Okay, like California First. Okay, Y Green, Hero. All right, there's different programs out there that are PACE oriented. But my point is, is why would we use one rather than the other? Well, because of its availability. Because of its availability, you know, for, to, here's and also the criteria for qualification. So within Y Green, for example, they just got heavily funded, you know, and they're really ramping up, you know. Now, with California First, you know, they're also a big fund as well in California and their different territories of the different states, but they're predominantly California. That's why it's California First. All right, Y Green is in California and Florida. Okay, heroes in different states, but. To give you an example of some differences, okay, uh, we have a client with, with Cal First, all right, and they couldn't qualify for Cal First because they had some judgment liens that were in excess of $1,000. They were in excess of $1,000, okay? So we said, oh man, that's a bummer. Now, let's try Y Green. Well, guess what? We go to Y Green, and Y Green, they're a little bit more looser on the guidelines on the judgments. They didn't really care. As long as there was some equity in the property, you know, they were able to, 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 to underwrite that loan, okay, the same, uh, and get that person approved. However, this was the reason why they couldn't get approved for Y Green, because Y Green was not in that zip code. They were not approved. See, these are county approved, voted in programs that are PACE. They're governmentally, you know, recommended and county voted, all right? And so if your county or your zip code is not in their jurisdiction, well, then guess what? That house cannot do it. So it was in the jurisdiction for Cal First, but then Cal First restriction was no judgment in excess of a thousand. Well, we tried Y Green, their restriction of the judgment, they didn't really care too much. Okay, they were able to underwrite it, but that area, that property, they weren't in that jurisdiction. So, you know, uh, then now we have another option that we're going with as well, maybe Hero. You know, so there's different reasons why we use different funds. And this is what we have to determine with the client in the very beginning. I'm not saying that this is your responsibility. This is our responsibility in step number one, which I'm gonna go over, which is bill review, okay? In addition to that, there's a reason why some clients would prefer to do a, a PACE program or a PPA, you know, or maybe even a lease. Well, we don't do anything as far as leases. We just do PPAs, okay, because within the context of real estate and that environment in California, you know, PPAs have grown a little bit more user-friendly and prevalent, all right? Not saying anything bad about leases, but they are different tools, and we just have selected to use only PPAs, all right? But a person that perhaps cannot qualify for the tax credit because maybe they've spoken with their tax practitioner, and when it comes to the tax credit, it just doesn't meet uh, their ability, 
okay, their tax liability may not be there or whatever the case it may be, right? So as opposed to leveraging and trying to receive the tax credit, which they may or may not be able to, maybe in this example they cannot, they will use a PPA because a PPA is not an ownership scenario. It's a you pay for the power that that system produce and the company that funds it. For example, we work with Sonova. So that company, they fund it, they own the system, so they're able to absorb the tax credit and depreciation of the, the asset that they own. They're, they're basically leasing your or renting your roof and providing you lower price energy. And at the end of that 20 or 25 or 30 year term, you're gonna have the ability to buy Buy it out if you so choose, or have them remove it, or transfer it, or assign a new uh, assign a new contractual agreement. Okay, so those are some of the differences. Perhaps you know, with uh, with a client that says, "Hey, you know, I want to go PPA," we may say, "Listen, you know, you should do California First or or a Pace program like Y Green, you know, or California First or Hero, right?" Because this is an ownership opportunity. You're going to be able to receive the tax credit. You're going to have a fixed payment for the next 20 or 25 or 30 years. It's going to be the same payment every single year. So as utility rates are rising and your cost is fixed, right? It's fixed. Utility rates are rising, okay? Guess what? Your savings is going to be also increasing as well. So when you have that fixed and then at the end of that term, you own the system. You have no additional obligation. You know, you own that system outright, whereas with a PPA, you don't, okay? Those are some of the unique differences, but they also depend on that client's unique situation. And so we, we, we gather all this stuff for you within step number one, our bill review. We're wanting to identify if that client is real. We're wanting to identify if that client was properly educated and we're going to educate them, okay, for you and edify you as a referring party. All right, and the more we do this for you, obviously, the more you're going to learn. All right, we're going to make sure that the right clear expectations are set and met with that client so that way there's no confusion. All right, we want to make sure that the expectations about solar within the industry and the context is clear, and also the process is also clear to your clients. So, clients, there's no confusion. All right, your responsibility is to simply lead generate. It's a lead generate and hand off the lead so that way you can get a form of comp compensation, but you can be an expert if you so choose to do the training. This is step number one of the training. All right, so I want you guys to understand and I want to take a step back, a pause for a moment and say the most powerful model that we leverage is an educational model with our clients and also our associates. We want our clients to leave first and foremost from that number one bill review educated on how their utility company bills them. We want them to understand how they're being, uh, how they're being, um, you know, measured as far as kilowatt hours and what that looks like. All right. We want them to understand what are the benefits of solar and why or why not solar would be a benefit for them or value add to them and their lifestyle and their property. Right. And we also want to just educate them on how creating ways of save through solar can also fuel, you know, investment opportunities or a wealth plan in accordance to our total living concept. You know, we're ERS, we do real estate, mortgage insurance, and also home services because at the end of the day, these are four tools in our toolbox, our tool belt, so that way we can help that client create a wealth plan. That's our product, total living concept. So <clears throat> step number one, step number one, we want, when you gain a lead, you got a, you got a client, you've spoken to them on the very basics, maybe you walked them through our website, Okay, you've leveraged the website as your basic tool to provide a basic level layer of education to your client. You walk them through that, that website. You show them perhaps some of the videos about you know, the tax credit or, um, uh, or how solar works, you know, as far as some of the videos that we have on the website that you can share with your client as just a basic synopsis or overview. And then you just let them know, listen, I'm not the expert. I'm not the expert, I'm learning. You know, I'm just I'm just a part of the organization and 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 the organization, they'll provide all the questions and all the I'm sorry, they'll answer all the answer questions for you. Okay, because I you know I don't want to mess things up. I don't I'm learning right now, but I know enough to get you excited about what's going on. And I know that we can potentially create some savings. Again, potentially. Not, every, not everything is guaranteed, okay? Um, but we're going to have, I would rather have an expert contact you, but the first thing I need to gather, at least on its basic 
pre pre qualification stage is your most recent bill. Okay, they can log in online. They can they can uh, call their utility company on three way with you or on speakerphone, right? Or if they give you permission to log in into their account or create one for them, you know, or, or add your account to theirs. Okay, just by getting their account number, their meter number, okay, that some of their billing information, you know, you can basically um, gain that information as far as the most recent bill and then at least the 12 months, the last 12 month kilowatt hour usage, KWH, kilowatt hour usage, every single month when they plug in or use electricity, they're accumulating, you know, kilowatt hours that they're going to be billed for. So we need to see in every single month how this energy is being used. Okay, because obviously in perhaps December or in, in comparison to June, they may use more in June because they're blowing their AC versus in, 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 in December, they're using more natural gas because they're using their heater. Okay, unless they have an electric water heater or electric heater system, you know, or a fully electric home, you know, they're going to be having some differences in the way they use energy. So we need to see the dynamics of their home and how they're using it. Maybe they have excess amount of people coming over and Christmas lights or, you know, what have you, family that are moving in with them in the next six months, or maybe they're buying an electric vehicle. We want to be able to identify those dynamics at the very beginning. Okay, and if you cannot identify those and when you submit that client's basic information, you put that in the notes, if you cannot identify them, then when we contact your client, we're going to do that for you. The first thing that we're going to do is not gain them or give them a proposal. The first thing that we're going to do is provide them a bill review. We're going to review their bill. We're going to understand why they want to go solar. We're going to identify their needs. We're going to edify you. We're going to edify the company. We're going to edify ourselves as a professional, and we're going to make sure they understand the value of why they should go solar with us. Once we've identified all their information is accurate and correct and we have all the pertinent information that we need, you know, we're looking at their roof, you know, with the uh, Google Earth, we're verifying that that address is actually the house because in some cases it could be not that way, right? Google's maybe showing the house next door. So we want to make sure that, hey, is this your roof? What kind of material is the roof? Do you have a ceiling? You know, do you have a, a, a what kind of a um, attic do you have? You know, is your insulation good? Because I mean, that right there could be a reason why your home is leaking thermal energy and you're having to blow your, 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 your AC so much because, you know, it's not maintaining the, the, the cool air because you're not insulated properly or your windows, right? That's why we're home services because we can, you know, we're eventually going to be helping in those areas as well. But right now we're just focusing on solar, okay? We're just focusing on solar. So we're going to identify all these things for you. And once that bill review call, which we're going to do, as soon as you submit that client's information on our website online, it comes into our system. We have an obligation to contact that client within the first 72 hours. Generally, we do it within the first day, okay, because this is a simple bill review. Quick 10 to 15 minute phone call. Make sure they're ready and they're expecting a call from us so it's not a surprise to them. And if they have a specific time window, maybe after 5 p.m. or before 9 a.m. or whatever the case may be, put that in the notes. Put that in the notes, okay? So once that's complete, man, we're, we're off to the races. We're essentially going to develop a proposal. We've identified their financing met, uh, means. So maybe it's a PACE program. If we do a PACE versus a PPA, it's a different proposal. So we need to identify this stuff in the beginning during a bill review so we can create and not waste time and create the right proposal that's going to fit their needs. Okay. So now number two, we develop a proposal proposal. We already understand the financing needs and we're going to contact them and we've already set a time and a date to contact them to present and deliver that proposal. Okay. And we're also going to be ready at that time to get the document signed so we can move forward with the project. Okay. So let's say step two, that's our PDR. Design, I'm sorry, DP, uh, DPR, design and proposal review, and also contract signing. Once that's signed, and it's very simple, folks, it's as simple as we get on the phone with our, our financing option. You know, maybe that's a Nova or, or a PACE program like Hero or CalFirst or Ygreen. It's a simple five minute phone call. All they need to know is their name, social, you know, address, verification, see who's on title. You know, they, it's about a five to 10, 15 minute phone call, and then we're done. Once they're approved, they send the documents to their email immediately. They're able to click and click in the contractual agreement in DocuSign. And then from there, 
it's all on our back end. Okay, it's all on my back end as far as our general contractors. The hardest part, guys, and I want to emphasize this, the hardest part really for us and for you guys watching this is the very initial beginning start starting point, bill review and client prep so that way they have the right expectations. They're not sold a pie in the sky. We're not trying to be other marketing companies out there, you know, or solar organizations that are, you know, using deceptive marketing or different advertisement to just get the client drawn in and then change everything up like a bait and switch. We don't want to have that culture as a company because remember, we're a financial organization. We want to build trust in the very beginning. And when, you know, all you need is that one simple margin of error to make or break trust. Trust me, believe me on that one, okay? And I'm pretty sure, you know, not just within the context of business, but in the context of life, you know, we all understand that that is very true. That one small little speck of dust on your white shirt can really ruin the night. That one wrong can ruin it for us, okay? And that one client can really make a negative or a great impact, okay? So we wanna make sure that the very beginning bill review is done and all clear expectations are set. Once the, the proposal and everything is signed, the financing is in place, then that's when it goes pretty quick. So number three, once we've done number one, bill review, number two, PDR, or um, uh, design and proposal review, DPR, then we go into scheduling for a site survey number three. Okay, so scheduling for a site survey. This is when we actually send someone to their home to verify that everything that we proposed, remember a proposal is a proposed plan, Everything we propose is accurate and correct. They get on the roof, they do measurements, they check to make sure that the material, the roof type is there. We also would love in the very beginning if we can get a picture of their electrical uh, panel box. You know that on the outside of their property, you open it up, it shows the amps and the voltage of their home or their box. You know, because sometimes we may need to increase that or whatever the case may be, but we need to know that so we can build a complete system more efficient and effectively. All right, but we send someone out to verify this information is, is correct, okay? And, and so that's, that's number three, we schedule for that. Number four, once we have that data, once we have that data collected, okay, then we submit that information to our engineering department. They're the ones who develop the blueprint, you know, so that way we can submit that, which is obviously the next step, okay, submitting the information for permitting the plans, and drawings and drafts to engineer or to, to permitting, okay, to your local building department or county, so that way they can approve the construction that we're going to do on your home. It's going to show the dimensions and the diameters, diameters of where the materials are going to be installed, what materials we're using, all those different specific codes um, they need to see. Okay, now that right there is where time can be not in our control because now we're at the mercy of obviously you know getting scheduling with site survey. You know, obviously we're at the mercy of waiting for engineering, which generally we have an engineer in our own team. Okay, so that's a little bit controlled. Then the next thing with permitting, you know, that's the county, that's the building department. You know, right now they're probably swamped with, depending on what area you're in, they're probably swamped with a lot of permits. So it may take them a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks or maybe a month to even approve a permit. Now we have to make sure that the client expects this, they know this. That way they're not getting upset at you, me or anyone else within this entire entire process or system. But obviously we wanna make sure we're keeping communication, at least following up every single week to let them know, hey, we're still thinking about you. How's everything going? You know, that's more or less your responsibility as a referring agent to be that, that middleman glue to just simply communicate, okay? And we make sure on our side, we're gonna be communicating with you and also the client as well, okay? In addition to that, once the permit is approved, the next step is simply scheduling for the install. Scheduling for the install. Whew, man, time's gone by, right? This process can take, you know, 30 days totally to get to install. It can take three months or even six months. You know, it just really depends on all those different variables that I hope that you're identifying with now. But the bottom line is, is, you know, now we're here at install. Now we're here at install. So install can take you know a couple of hours, six to eight hours, maybe a day, maybe two days, depending on how many roof planes we're installing on. If it's a single side of the home, maybe we have two different you know arrays. Okay, that means a cluster of panels here on one roof section, or a cl and another, another cluster on another roof section. That's two different arrays. So sometimes there's different complexity within that because we're running wire 
you know, through the addict or, you know, how we have to run it in, a, in, a, in, a, in accordance to the code into the electrical uh, uh, components there, right? And so depending on the complexity, that install may be three, four, five hours. That install may be two days, okay? The bottom line is, is the installs there. Once that's complete, the building department will send someone out to inspect. They really review the electrical, obviously, for safety and environmental hazardous reasons, okay? They want to make sure that your family and your home is protected, safely, secure, and sound when it comes to electrical. They also respect the panels and the, the mounting to the roof, all right? They approve it. They sign off on it. Then, after that, so that's the final inspection, okay, with the building department. But at the same time, in addition to that, the last and final step is PTO, permission to operate. That comes from your utility company. They have to provide the interconnection authority to give you permission to turn that switch on and actually start feeding the grid and accumulating credits. Remember, at the end of every year, there's a true up. There's a true up. So, you know, get your client in the habit now of saving some money and setting some money aside because at the end of that year, they may get a surprise bill you know, and they say it's a surprise bill, but yeah, we told them that, hey, we're offsetting 95%. You may have a small bill with PG&E or your utility company because we, never, we weren't able to put all the panels on your roof because maybe there was too many vents or the fire offsets. We needed to be a certain amount of feet from the, the roof line or whatever the case is, we have a limited space and we couldn't fit all the panels we needed. Or maybe we could, you know, and all of a sudden what happens in some cases is the client because they know they have solar on the roof, they just start going crazy with energy. All of a sudden they have their thermostat set to 60 degrees all year round. It's like an ice box in their home. That's something they have never done before. But because in their mind they feel, oh, I have solar. I can use all the electrical I want and I need. And don't get me wrong, you know, we want you to be comfortable in your home. We want you to be more comfortable. That's one of the biggest benefits of going you know, solar is because now you're not subjected to the higher tier charges. Remember, you have different tiers depending on where you are, your utility or you're using, right? When you start using more, you start getting charged more. Well, with solar, if we build a system to accommodate what your needs are and what your desires are, you, know, you may want to use more electricity. We'll, we'll educate you that during the bill review process as far as how you're being measured with kilowatt hours. Okay, but you may say, hey, I actually want to use more. I've been kind of for the last couple of years, it's getting hotter now. This is global warming stuff, it seems to be true. I wanna be able to really blow my AC the way I want to. Can you build a system that's slightly bigger so that way I can actually increase my usage? Absolutely, we'll take those factors into consideration, but you have to also make sure you understand that there's a true up statement at the end of every year. So this can work in either A or B, meaning A, if you produce more energy than what you use, your system produced more kilowatt hours than what you use, that means you fed the grid, the utility, and your meter spent backwards, you accumulated credits for that year. So at the end of the year, they calculate that because every month is gonna be different, right? You're gonna be accumulating credits, you're gonna be using. At night, you're using what you accumulated. You may use more, you may use less than what you produce, right? And you may consume more than what you produce, right? Your system's producing and then you're consuming. So you have to understand the nature of the, your usage, right? So at the end of the year, that true up says, oh, you consumed less than what you produced. That means that you're going to gain a credit. Yeah, that's an awesome situation to be in, right? Or it may be, be the opposite. You consumed more than what you produced Therefore, you, produ you, you consume the remainder of that from the utility company and you may owe them, you know, 50 or 100 or a couple hundred bucks for the year, right? At the end of the day, you may want to set aside 10 bucks, 15 bucks, 20 bucks a month just in case. That way you don't get that surprise bill. Generally, the utility company will work with you and, you know, break it up into even uh, payments throughout the year. You know, you can get on sometimes a balanced pay pay plan. Uh, Whatever the case it may be, you know, we want to make sure that our clients are set up correctly. They understand this process and everything is clearly, soundly understood. Okay, so I know that this was a quick training introductory video, um, you know, for everyone getting started with us. Obviously, we also have the very beginning orientation that kind of talks to you about our organization and the structure within that. Uh, as well. So this right here is also a helpful video. Make sure that when you bring on new people or when people are out there in your branch or in your team and they're saying, hey, I have a question about this. I have a question about that. 
you know, how does this work again? Make sure to refer them to this video, this link, this video here, because I'm sure that you gained a lot of education benefit from watching this 25 minute video, okay, if that, and I'm sure that this video was very impactful. So if you have any additional questions, remember every week we have training. Make sure to tap into your field vice president or above and make sure that they're sending you the information about the weekly training schedule. You know, not only do we have training within the context of real estate, I mean, I'm sorry, with uh, uh, home services and solar particularly, but we have training in all the other areas as well. So plug into our training, plug in. So that way you can extract your juice of energy, all right, and through education and knowledge and be empowered to go out there and change the world from there, from here, okay? So, hey, I love each and every one of you guys. Thank you guys for listening to our, our training here. Um, I look forward to meeting every one of you guys in person and let's go out there and help light up the lives of so many people and help them create ways to save so they can fuel their retirement plan and create an early retirement system, leverage our early retirement system for them. Thank you. Lord bless. Bye-bye for now.